When they announced X-Men, we knew that they had Cyclops coming and they had a lot to live up to with Cyclops. Let's see if they were able to pull it out. Hey, I'm Nelson. This is Nelson All Over Cards and today we're taking a look at the tactical genius who is Scott Summers, aka Cyclops. So I played a lot of games with Cyclops on stream. I played through a couple of games incorrectly. We fixed that. We played through four games in the aspects, played through them with Ronin. I've been playing with him a lot off screen as well, just because of how much fun I've been having with him. He is really cool in multiplayer. He's also very strong in solo play, but I do think that he does shine in multiplayer. But since we are doing a solo review, let's dive into it. In Alter Ego, Scott Summers has 10 HP as well as a three recovery. His ability is that he can include X-Men allies from any aspect during the deck building process, which makes him really flexible and will continue to make him better as we start seeing more X-Men in this game. In solo play, this is excellent. However, I have found that when you are sitting down with more people at the table, this can get pretty restrictive because a lot of the people want to be running the allies that you want to be running in their own aspect. And so this can get a little, you, you can start stepping on a little bit of toes depending on how many players you're playing in the game. In a solo game, this makes it so that you can take on pretty much any scenario that you want. You can put the allies in there that are gonna get you access to what you need to be doing and you're gonna have a good time. He also has a constant training ability on his alter ego side that he says he's able to search his deck for a tactic upgrade um, and add it to his hands. He has six in his kit and there's actually a lot of tactic upgrades that they have printed previously that we're going to kind of dive into a couple of those here later in the video, but I'm sure we will start seeing more of those. And just like Ghost Spider, a lot of these heroes that trigger off of specific keywords like Black Widow these these heroes are going to continue to get better as we continue to print more tactic upgrades or more cards that relate to that specific hero so cyclops can only get better from here on out on his hero side he has a 212 stat line with five hand size he has an optic blast ability that says spend one resource to deal three damage to an enemy with an upgrade attached so this is a upgrade that you would be placing on the enemy not an attachment or a, a card from the encounter deck that would be on a enemy. So that was one of the confusions, that's some of the confusion that I've seen. So if I have a weapon from the experimental weapons deck, is that considered an upgrade? It is not. These are the upgrades that come in his kit, as well as some other aspect upgrades that have been printed in his pack or upgrades that we've seen in other heroes. So like Spider-Man's webbed up, Shadowcat's phased and confused upgrade or other upgrades along those same lines. One thing that I will say before we get too far into the review is that he feels like he's kind of being pulled in two directions, building to the X-Men as well as into the Optic Blast slash upgrade route. I was concerned about this a little bit more so than before I played him, but it feels like you lean more towards the X-Men and then the upgrade damage from the Optic Blast is a nice to have. It's not necessary, I, I think it is kind of hard to build around. It's easy to get those out there and with his Ruby Quartz Visor, which is one of the upgrades in his kit, it allows you to have a printed resource generator on the table. It also gives his Optic Blast ranged and piercing, which is really nice in certain situations and scenarios. But the main source of damage I have found has been coming from his allies, specifically your big swingers like Wolverine or some of the other X-Men allies with training upgrades attached. So the Optic Blast I have tried to build around a little bit and not had a lot of success. If you have had success, please let me know in the comments because I'm still kind of curious about seeing decks where that is the main source of the deck build. But right now I have seen that the X-Men have just been the core and then the Optic Blast is nice to have for three damage when you have it, when, when you need it. He has three tactic upgrades. Each of these upgrades he has two copies of and they're all temporary, meaning that at the end of the round they will get discarded. He has a way to fix that temporary on minions, but starting out all of these will get discarded after one round. The first one is practice defense. Practice defense is a zero cost upgrade saying that the attached enemy has minus one attack. So really nice rolling into the villain phase if you have someone big or maybe a minion that has one attack or a high attack you can reduce that 
but really practice defense is the one that I'm, if I need a resource that I'll tutor with the constant training ability to spend. Practice defense I think is the lowest tier out of these three. The next one is an exploit weakness, which is incredibly strong. It's the only one that costs more than zero in his kit. And it says that every instance of damage dealt to the attached enemy is plus one damage. So this can get pretty insane, especially in, in a higher player count game, or if you're running a high X-Men ally strategy or high ally strategy for that sense. Because if you are swinging with three allies as well as Cyclops, and his optic blast, that's an additional five damage for one resource. And that's really good payback. So I have found exploit weakness really does offset his one attack stat because he's able to pull exploit weakness, put it onto the villain, and usually it is the villain that I'm throwing this on, and kind of pushing there towards the end. Maybe having a couple of big attacks or a swarm of allies to just deal massive amounts of damage and the exploit weakness really helps that pop off. The last one that he has is priority target. This is kind of that mid range starting to build upgrade that I think works very, very well. It's a zero cost upgrade that says whenever the attached enemy is defeated, draw two cards. So this one I have found myself putting more on minions or if the villain is close to flipping into their second stage, maybe around like a three or a four, if I can hit him and make sure that he pops, get to draw those two cards. That is also a really nice target for priority target. Um, priority target is probably one of the more niche ones where the other two are just generally good at any time. However, priority target can be a little situationally good slash bad. So if you only have the villain and no minions on the table, the villain's at full health, then priority target can be an issue if you draw it into your hand. And typically I find I use that as a resource to that point. But we have more tactic upgrades that can be attached to enemies that were printed in Cyclops' pack. But these three are by far the strongest and the ones that I am usually fishing for if I even have the other ones in my deck. Let's talk about some of his other cards. His signature ally, who is Phoenix, no surprise there, is a three cost ally with a two, two, three stat line. And she has the ability that when she enters play, you can go get a Colossus card from your discard pile. This can be so incredibly flexible that allows you to go get a specific upgrade that you need, maybe priority target, allowing you to draw two more cards or an event, maybe you need tactical brilliance, which is gonna help you, you know, mitigate threat on the table or just get you an extra money and you're effectively paying a two cost for Phoenix because you are being able to recur one of his cards. The next card, which I mentioned previously is tactical brilliance. So this allows you to remove three threat from a scheme for two costs and allows you to go grab any tactic card. So this one is a little bit different than his ability. This is any tactic card. It does not need to be an upgrade. So it does pull in supports and events into what you can tutor back. And so this could be like a regroup or it could be an assess the situation. There are a lot of tactic events that Tactical Brilliance allows you to go get. Um, but so many times I find myself just wanting to go grab another one of those tactic upgrades, throwing it onto the villain or a big minion and using that upgrade to then defeat or push through to deal more damage. So it's a little bit more flexibility, but I found myself not needing that flexibility a lot because typically my target is going to be one of my tactic upgrades that he has in his kit. The last card that I wanna talk about in his kit is not super great for solo play, but Field Commander. It takes away the temporary keyword on all the tactic upgrades attached to minions, which can be very situationally useful, I think, in solo play. However, in multiplayer, it's really cool because it also allows you to always be taking the first turn. This allows you to get those upgrades out before anyone else takes the turn so that everybody at the table can utilize the benefit that the upgrade provides. They don't have to wait for it to get around to your turn and then everyone else in the turn order gets you there. So usually in solo play, I find myself playing Field Commander just to get it out of my deck. It's a one cost upgrade, so if it is a turn where I have a little bit of extra resources, you know, get it into my deck so I can thin it out just a little bit, 
or I'm just using it for money in solo play. But it's a really cool design for multiplayer. I do really like that. This is where I typically talk about some basic cards that I like to be using in my Cyclops deck build or in my hero deck build and there's not a ton of basic cards outside the ones that we've already talked about like Cerebro, Expansion, all of that stuff that I like for Cyclops mainly because he fills his deck with his basic cards and I say basic cards because like basically all of the allies from the other aspects that you're running are taking a lot of those slots. I don't really have a, a great suggestion for a huge basic card outside of the ones that all the X-Men like, but I will call out Danger Room specifically here just because um, Danger Room allows you, if you are an alter ego once you play an ally, to go get a training upgrade and attach it to that ally. And this can be really good with Wolverine or other big allies. I keep saying Wolverine because Wolverine is an incredibly good ally. So Cyclops really does like to stay and hang out in alter ego in order to get use of that consistent training action on his alter ego side to get all of those upgrades, use it to pay. And so Danger Room and also all of the other cards that can trigger off being an alter ego like Cerebro and all of those work really well in Cyclops because he does I do find myself spending the majority of the game down there maybe like a 60 40 split when it's usually like an 80 20 split right so I'm usually very rarely going to alter ego but Cyclops really does like being down there and so having danger room out beefing up some of your big allies for free when they are coming out can be really crucial in the shed. The other card that I, I'm not going to say he absolutely loves this card or it needs to be in all of your decks, but Meditation works pretty well in Cyclops's deck. So Meditation says that you can exhaust your alter ego and reduce a card and play a card with reducing its cost by three. So this allows him to get some really high cost cards out there, especially with the X-Men. Those cards are fairly expensive, all of those allies. And his stat line isn't incredible. It's a 2 1 2. He's going to be running a lot of allies. So, really, a lot of the damage and threat mitigation comes from your allies. And so, exhausting to pay for higher cost cards does work really well. I had a lot of fun with Meditation in Cyclops' deck, but I'm not, it doesn't need to be in all of them. He can very much function without it. I just wanted to bring it up because it was kind of fun to play with. So let's rank the aspects in terms of worst to best. And then I'm going to call out uh, my favorite aspect once we do get there. And this is a little difficult because all of his aspect builds tend to look pretty similar considering the fact that he can have X-Men from any aspect in his deck that the majority of the deck almost feels like the same. And then you add in a couple of cards from the individual aspect that you're front coming from. But like, I think my justice and aggression deck had like three or four different cards in it and so that would be one of the downsides to cyclops not saying that it's like a negative in the power ranking side it's not he's not worse because of that it's less interesting to deck build which actually could be a plus for some people because it's going to be very strong and very consistent and so with that said let's just dive into it and i'll talk through each one of them when we get there. So so in fourth place, we have Justice. Cyclops already has a good bit of mit threat mitigation in his kit. He has two thwart, and then you're gonna wanna be playing Tactical Brilliance, which is another three threat mitigation. In order to go grab those tactic upgrades from your discard pile, or your tactic cards from your discard pile, I should say. And so really Justice doesn't provide a whole lot to Cyclops' kit because he's kind of got threat taken care of. With the other aspects, he can typically focus on thwarting and then he can utilize his allies to, you know, tactically utilize his allies. You kind of do feel like a field commander and have them do all the damage. Um, the couple things that Justice does provide is the ability to confuse, which I didn't have a huge issue with his threat uh, control. So confusion is a nice to have and may allow you to stay down and utilize your cerebros and all of your supports a little bit more while in alter ego. But really I didn't find justice to provide a ton to the Cyclops build. In third place, we have aggression and aggression is very similar to justice, but attack training is absolutely incredible with Wolverine com combining that with a priority target, making a damage just 
come by so very easily. Also, there are a couple of other upgrades like boot camp and everything where you can make a very aggressive ally build in the red aspect that I think does work pretty effectively. Um, it's that, and that's why it edges out justice a little bit. However, the other two aspects just have so much more support for what Cyclops is trying to do, which is, so they're kind of in a league of their own. Third place is protection. And so protection is really good because you have access to the cards that will be able to heal your allies, allowing them to stay out. And really Cyclops is utilizing these allies to do what he wants to do. So having them out longer is absolutely incredible. Also mutant protectors is an incredible card. This is a defense card that says whenever a enemy initiates an attack, you it's a one cost card to put a X-Men ally that and declare them defender of that attack. What I really like to do here is utilize this for attacks against minions. So what that kind of looks like is a minion is attacking, say for like one damage, I can then get beast or I can get someone huge, like a really high cost X-Men ally out as the defender to take that one damage. And now I'm effectively playing that X-Men ally for a one cost because it does not come back to your hand. It does not get discarded like it does with sneak attack. It stays on the table. So if they survive the attack, you're getting them out for really cheap. And so that's why protection works so very well because you have all of these awesome allies. Like think about it like Wolverine. Wolverine will heal at the start of your turn. So if you use mutant protectors to throw Wolverine out as a defender to a one or two damage um, minion, then when it comes back to your turn, he's going to heal one of those. He'll be exhausted, so you don't get to use him. But then he'll heal right back to full uh, on your second turn, ready to go as if it, you had just played Wolverine for a four cost. Also, the tactic upgrade for protection, I do believe, is the best one that we have seen. It's called Pin Down. It says attached to a minion, and that minion gets minus two attack. So you can it's a zero cost upgrade. You can just slap it on a minion and never worry about them as long as they don't have like a guard or a patrol keyword. Also making mutant protectors even better, right? If you can mutant protectors on a zero attack minion, you get someone out for free, they're gonna take no damage. It's just a really cool combo to play. And then you can throw in cards to just continually heal the allies there. Protection is my favorite to play. I meant to call that out at the beginning, but I kind of forgot. Let's move into the best aspect, which is leadership. And leadership is so very good because leadership is the ally aspect. It has so much support for allies. It would be hard, I think, for someone to make an argument that leadership is not the best for Cyclops. And I do, I'm curious. If you don't think leadership is the best, please let me know in the comments, because I'm curious why you think so. Because because he has access to the aggression allies, the justice allies, the protection allies, and then you have the ability to utilize leadership to make sure that they are staying alive. You can beef them up. You can throw upgrades on them. You can make Wolverine just like an insane... You can, you can do a Voltron Wolverine deck with command teams, and now he's swinging for six and seven multiple times around. He's going to be healing... Leadership can provide so much satisfying gameplay for Cyclops that not only is it really good, it's also incredibly fun to play. Also, leadership is incredible because rapid response is a tactic upgrade, which means that it can be, it can be grabbed utilizing his constant training ability. This, is, this can get a little dumb. So rapid response is the upgrade that says whenever an ally is defeated, you can discard this card to bring it back with one damage on it. And so many things can be exploited with rapid response. It's kind of funny. So you can continue to keep a really high cost ally out there, like keeping Wolverine. You can trigger Beast again. So Beast says that whenever he enters play, go get a resource card and add it to your hand. And so you can get Beast in again, go grab a double. So there's just so many ways that you can exploit rapid response and the fact that he can go get it and have it turn one to trigger at the exact right moment is so incredibly powerful. Leadership is so good with Cyclops and I'm excited to hear people tell me why it is not the best because there were a couple people who voted that it was not the best. Speaking of that, I'm going to throw the community rankings right up here on the screen and the community kind of agreed with what I said. I mean, by far and away, leadership was the highest ranked uh, <laughs> aspect for Cyclops. It was actually over 80% of the people said that leadership was the best 
for Cyclops. So I think that this has been the most unanimous that we've ever had on a community ranking. So that's kind of fun. Um, they did have protection as the lowest, but I think I think protection is still the third. Um, so just because of the ways that you can heal and you have access to mutant protectors, protection's pretty good. It, I think, it, I mean like aggression, justice, protection, leadership is like way off here off screen. Also the community overall rank had Cyclops ranked at an A tier and I am going to agree with that. So my overall ranking for Cyclops is A tier. I'm gonna slide him right between Miss Marvel and Phoenix. And his flexibility is just so incredible. He can do almost whatever he wants. It just feels like he is that tactical genius. You really do feel like you are playing a field commander. And because you have so much ability to go get cards with Phoenix, with his consistent training ability, with his uh, tactical brilliance events, that you're able to go get the cards that you need to be doing what you need to be doing in the situation that you are currently in. And you really do feel like a genius. It's kind of fun, like a tactical genius. So I think that they nailed the uh, theme with Cyclops, absolutely. And since he has the ability to flex into whatever you need and the ability to pull an X-Men from any of the aspects, he makes an incredibly strong solo hero. I guess like the only reason that he's not even higher would be the fact that he does want to be an alter ego, which is always a risk in solo play. But since we have access to as much threat mitigation that Cyclops does have, that is a weakness that is easily handled by him, but there's always the threat of a scheme advance and losing the game or threading out. So there are a little bit of downsides, but overall just an incredibly strong hero and really, really fun. So what are your thoughts on Cyclops? I think I had him ranked third when I initially did my Mutant Genesis review. I think that's still where I fall. I think Colossus is the most fun, Shadowcat, then Cyclops. However, they are just all so much fun. Let me know what your thoughts are on Cyclops in the comments. Throw out some of your favorite deck builds because I feel like all of my deck builds feel feel very similar. So I'm really intrigued to see how, what people have come up with because I know there are people way more creative than I am and I like to see kind of what they come up with. So if you have something that you think is really cool and really unique, let me know and throw that down in the comments. So we are going back to some of the legacy heroes in the Hero Spotlight uh, series for next until we get some new X-Men allies being Storm and Wolverine next. And so going back into the archives, playing some of the old heroes. So I'm really excited to do that, but you can find a link below in the description and vote on who you want to see next. We'll play four games and then we'll do a review video just like this one for whoever is the highest voted. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It goes so very far in helping me continue to put out content for this incredible game and it just helps get it to more people and so that's always very much appreciated. Until next time, go be a field commander, enjoy you some X-Men, see you around, peace. Thank you.